God's Faith, Never Have Another Prayer Ignored Again. Written and published by God Daily News. Introduction. Did you know that 55% of world populations pray daily? Yet, many confess feeling like their prayers are ignored. It's a frustrating experience, isn't it? However, Hebrews 11 verse 6 gives us a clue on how to bridge this gap. It says, And without faith, it is impossible to please God, because anyone who comes to Him must believe that He exists and that He rewards those who earnestly seek Him. This suggests a powerful approach to prayer that might change your experience. Interested in exploring a method that could transform your prayer life and deepen your relationship with God? Stay with me, let's unpack this together. Before we begin, I'd like to appeal to those who still need to subscribe to the channel. Please subscribe, like, and share the video. God bless you as you do this. Also, check the video description for more information and resources. Thanks. Chapter 1 Master Prayer's Purpose Why do we pray? You're likely seeking a profound, theological answer, aren't you? You're not alone. Prayer, fundamentally, is an act of communication with the divine, a means of connecting with God. But it's not just about asking for things or expressing gratitude. It goes deeper, it's more intricate, more profound. Prayer is about aligning ourselves with God's will. It's about creating a spiritual bond that facilitates a divine human synergy. It's about establishing a consciousness of divine presence, feeling it, acknowledging it, and letting it guide our lives. When you pray, you're not just speaking into the void. Rather, you're actively engaging with a divine entity, you're participating in a spiritual dialogue. But here's the deal, prayer isn't a one-way street. It's not solely about you expressing yourself to God, it's also about you listening to God. It's a two-way communication. You're not only pouring out your heart, but you're also opening it to receive divine guidance, wisdom, and assurance. Prayer is an act of surrender. It's you acknowledging that there's a power greater than you, a divine force that's able to influence your life in ways you can't. So when you pray, understand that it's not merely a religious obligation, it's a spiritual journey. It's an invitation to experience the divine, to engage with the sacred, to immerse yourself in a divine human dialogue that won't only transform your life but also your understanding of God's purpose for you. To master prayer's purpose, you must first realize its core, its function, its potential to connect you with the divine. Chapter 2 Biblical Foundations of Prayer Understanding the nature and purpose of prayer goes hand in hand with exploring its biblical foundations. To grasp this, you must excavate into the Old and New Testaments, where prayer is a recurring theme. Consider the Old Testament, where prayer is seen as a dialogue with God, displayed prominently in the Psalms. Here, David engages in heartfelt conversations with God, demonstrating raw emotions from desperation to joy. He isn't just praying for his needs, but expressing his deepest sentiments, forming an intimate relationship with the divine. In the New Testament, prayer takes on a more communal aspect. Jesus teaches his disciples to pray, presenting the Lord's Prayer as a model, Matthew 6 verses 9 to 13. It's not merely a set of words to recite but a pattern that guides us on how to pray effectively. Prayer, then, isn't a monologue but a dialogue, a relational activity where you express your heart to God and hear His in return. It's not a wish list sent to a celestial Santa, but a means to connect with your Creator. Innovative thinking challenges us to move beyond traditional prayer rituals and into a dynamic, interactive relationship with God. It's understanding that prayer isn't something to be compartmentalized into certain times or places, but rather a lifestyle choice, an ongoing conversation that transcends boundaries. A thorough examination of this biblical foundation of prayer gives you a solid platform to build your prayer life on, opening the door to never having another prayer ignored again. Chapter 3 The Importance of Faith The cornerstone of any spiritual journey, faith plays a pivotal role in your relationship with God. 
This isn't about blind acceptance, but rather a trust rooted deeply in your understanding and recognition of God's omnipotence. It's the very fabric that weaves your spiritual life together, holding the threads of your beliefs, hopes, and actions in a cohesive tapestry. Consider Hebrews 11 verse 1, which defines faith as, the assurance of things hoped for, the conviction of things not seen. This conceptualization suggests that faith is a form of knowledge, a knowing that eclipses physical evidence and empirical proof. It's a certainty born not of sight, but of spiritual insight. Your faith isn't just a passive acceptance, it's an active force. James 2 verse 17 reminds us that, faith by itself, if it isn't accompanied by action, is dead. This might sound harsh, but it's simply emphasizing the importance of living out your faith. It's not enough to believe in God's power, you must also act in a way that demonstrates this belief. Finally, faith is your conduit to God. It's the channel through which your prayers are heard and answered. Without faith, your prayers may feel like they're bouncing off a divine voicemail. But with faith, you're on a direct line to the Almighty. Chapter 4 Setting Your Intentions In light of your faith's role as an active force, setting your intentions becomes a pivotal step in your spiritual journey. It's not just a vague concept, it's a concrete action you undertake. It's a decision to align your will with God's will, grounded in a profound understanding of His Word. Let's explore this through a theological lens. The Bible underscores the importance of intentions in numerous passages. Proverbs 16 verse 3 advises, Commit your work to the Lord, and your plans will be established. This verse suggests that it's not enough to act, your actions must be rooted in a commitment to God. Intentionality consequently, becomes a core component of faith. What does this look like in practice? It's about being deliberate in your faith journey. It's about consciously deciding to seek God's presence in your daily life, to open your heart to His teachings, and to pursue to embody His love and compassion. Remember, intentionality in faith isn't just about what you're doing, it's about why you're doing it. It's about ensuring that your actions reflect your belief in God's power and wisdom. Innovation in faith practice comes through this intentionality. When you set your intentions, you're not simply going through the motions or sticking to tradition for tradition's sake. You're actively seeking to deepen your relationship with God, to understand His Word better, and to live out His teachings more fully. Chapter 5 Creating a Prayer Routine Establishing a prayer routine is a powerful way to commit yourself to intentional faith. It's not just about setting aside time each day, but also about structuring that time to maximize spiritual growth. This isn't a novel idea, but rather a time-honored practice with a fresh, innovative twist. Firstly, consider the frequency of your prayers. The Apostle Paul encourages us in 1 Thessalonians 5 verse 17 to pray without ceasing, which isn't about praying every second, but about maintaining a constant, open line of communication with God. Infuse your day with micro-prayers, brief, focused interludes of prayer, that punctuate your routines. Next, focus on the content of your prayers. Jesus provides a model for us in Matthew 6 verses 9 to 13, commonly known as the Lord's Prayer. Notice that it's not a lengthy monologue, but a concise, potent dialogue with God that acknowledges His sovereignty, seeks His will, requests provision and protection, and ends in praise. Use this model as a template for your prayer routine. Finally, confirm your prayers are guided by faith, not just form. Hebrews 11 verse 6 reminds us that, without faith it's impossible to please Him. Consequently, let your prayer routine be a faith exercise, an innovative way to strengthen your trust in God. Creating a prayer routine promotes consistency and depth in your relationship with God. It's an innovative approach to an age-old practice, a fresh perspective on a timeless truth. Chapter 6 The Role of Silence Amid the noise and chaos of life, silence serves as a sanctuary for your spirit. It's not merely the absence of sound, but a dynamic space where divine communication can flourish. 
This concept, although often overlooked, holds a theological importance in enhancing the depth of your spiritual connection with God. Silence, in the biblical context, isn't a passive state but an active engagement, a fertile ground for the seeds of faith to germinate. Psalm 46 verse 10 exclaims, Be still, and know that I'm God, implying that silence is integral to acknowledging and understanding God's omnipotence. In this silence, you're not just waiting but actively surrendering, opening up your spirit to God's whisper. The role of silence in prayer is akin to the silent pauses in a musical composition, enhancing the beauty of the melody by providing space for reflection and anticipation. It's in these tranquil moments that you can truly listen to God's voice, grasp His intentions, and gain clarity on His paths for you. Habakkuk 2 verse 20 states, The Lord is in His holy temple, let all the earth be silent before Him. This verse emphasizes the reverence and awe that silence before God signifies, fostering a deeper sense of spirituality. In the clamor of today's world, silence can be a revolutionary act, a countercultural choice that brings you closer to God. So, embrace the silence, for it's not an empty void, but a platform for divine dialogue, a sacred space where you and God meet. With silence, you're not just heard, but you're also understood. In silence, your prayers find resonance with God. Chapter 7 Practicing Active Listening Active listening is a spiritual discipline, one that elevates your relationship with God to higher grounds. This practice isn't simply about hearing God's Word, rather, it involves processing, understanding, and responding to it. While you may believe you're already a good listener, active listening requires a more profound commitment, one that extends beyond casual conversation into the heart of divine communication. You mustn't mistake active listening for a passive act. It necessitates your active participation, your conscious effort to tune into God's frequency and disconnect from worldly distractions. It's not about just being quiet. It's about intentionally seeking God's voice in the silence, in the whisper, and even in the roar of life's storms. The scriptures frequently remind us to hear the Word of God, but the true essence of this instruction lies in active listening. When Jesus said, He whose ears to hear, let him hear, Matthew 11 verse 15, he was encouraging active listening. This involves not just physical hearing but spiritual discernment, understanding, and responding appropriately. So, how do you practice active listening? Start with an open heart and a quiet mind. Pray for the Spirit's guidance to discern God's voice from other noises. Be patient and don't rush the process. Remember, it's about quality, not quantity. Active listening can revolutionize your prayer life. It'll make your prayers more focused, purposeful, and responsive to God's will. So, don't just speak to God, listen to Him. Cultivate the discipline of active listening and experience a deeper, more meaningful relationship with the divine. Chapter 8 Incorporating Scripture into Prayer Having nurtured the discipline of active listening, you're now prepared to elevate your spiritual journey by incorporating Scripture into your prayers. This is a vital step towards ensuring your prayers aren't only heard but also responded to. It's a process that requires depth of understanding, commitment, and a heart for innovation. The Scriptures, as divinely inspired words, hold power and authority. When you weave them into your prayers, you're fundamentally echoing God's promises and His will. This isn't about merely reciting verses, it's about understanding their context and applying them in your personal prayers. Take for instance James 4 verse 3, which states, You ask and don't receive, because you ask wrongly, to spend it on your passions. In your prayer, you might say, Lord, teach me to ask rightly, not for my selfish desires, but for your kingdom's sake. Here, you're not just quoting the scripture, rather, you're engaging it in a dialogue, bringing it to life in your prayer. But how do you select the right scriptures for your prayers? Begin by studying the Bible regularly, the Holy Spirit will guide you to passages that resonate with your prayer needs. Don't rush this process, it's a journey of spiritual growth and transformation. 
Incorporating scripture into your prayers isn't a magic formula for getting what you want. Instead, it aligns your prayers with God's will, making them more effective and impactful. Chapter 9 The Power of Praise Why is praise such a powerful tool in our spiritual lives? Fundamentally, praise is a clear form of communication with our Creator that aligns our spirit with His. It's a heartfelt acknowledgement of God's sovereignty, goodness, and love. When you praise, you're not just expressing admiration, you're actively engaging with the Divine. Your praise is a reflection of your understanding of God's nature. In the book of Psalms, David frequently utilized praise as a means to commune with God. Psalm 100 verse 4 tells us, Enter his gates with thanksgiving and his courts with praise, give thanks to him and praise his name. Here, the act of praise isn't just a command, it's an invitation into a deeper relationship with God. The transformative power of praise can't be overstated. It's an act that transcends the physical and reaches into the spiritual, altering your perspective and shifting your focus from your circumstances to God's omnipotence. This shift often leads to a spiritual breakthrough, enabling you to see your situation through God's eyes. Innovatively, think of praise as a spiritual discipline that enhances your prayer life. It's not just about saying words, but about cultivating an attitude of gratitude, love, and respect towards God. It's an innovative way to express your faith, drawing you closer to God and opening up new dimensions in your spiritual journey. Chapter 10 Confession and Repentance Your journey in faith requires a deep understanding of confession and repentance. These twin pillars of Christian faith aren't merely religious rituals, but profound processes that facilitate a transformative encounter with God. Confession isn't just about admitting wrongs, it's an innovative act of self-awareness, an honest appraisal of your actions and attitudes in the light of divine standards. The Bible, in Proverbs 28 verse 13, emphasizes the necessity of confession. Whoever conceals their sins doesn't prosper, but the one who confesses and renounces them finds mercy. Here, confession isn't an admission of defeat, but rather, it's a courageous step towards spiritual freedom. It's an innovative approach to personal growth and spiritual maturation. Repentance, on the other hand, is more than just feeling guilty. It's a transformative process of turning away from sin and towards God. It's about making a radical shift in your life direction, motivated by a new understanding of God's love and grace. Acts 3 verse 19 implores, Repent, then, and turn to God, so that your sins may be wiped out, that times of revitalization may come from the Lord. Consequently, repentance marks your conscious decision to forsake old, detrimental ways and embrace a life that's aligned with God's design. Understanding confession and repentance as transformative processes for spiritual growth reframes them from burdensome obligations to empowering, innovative tools. They create a dynamic pathway to a deeper relationship with God, a relationship that's marked by honesty, humility, and a continual desire for growth. Chapter 11 Seeking Guidance Through Prayer In the wake of your confession and repentance, the next innovative step is to seek divine direction through prayer. This isn't merely a religious exercise, but a dynamic communication with God, as you engage in a dialogue that seeks divine guidance. The theology of prayer is rooted in the belief that God listens and responds to your requests. This process requires faith and patience. As James 1 verses 5 to 6 states, If any of you lacks wisdom, you should ask God, who gives generously to all without finding fault, and it will be given to you. But when you ask, you must believe and not doubt. It's not just about asking, but about asking with conviction and expectancy. In prayer, you're not merely presenting your requests but aligning your will with God's. It's not a monologue but a dialogue, where you speak and listen. The act of listening in prayer is often overlooked, yet it's where you receive divine direction. Your prayers are more than just words, they're a reflection of your heart's desires. As Proverbs 16 verse 3 encourages, commit to the Lord whatever you do, and He'll establish your plans. When you truly seek His guidance and surrender your plans to Him, 
you're trusting that his plans are better than yours. Innovation in prayer isn't about changing the act of prayer itself, but about changing your approach and attitude towards it. It's about seeking guidance, not just answers. It's about pouring out your heart to God, not just listing your requests. It's about entering into a relationship, not just a ritual. Chapter 12 The Impact of Gratitude Basking in the glow of divine guidance, you might overlook the profound significance of gratitude in fostering a deeper connection with God. Gratitude, in its purest form, is a transformative force, enriching your spiritual journey and amplifying the resonance of your prayers. You see, gratitude isn't just a polite thank you, it's an acknowledgement of God's omnipresence and infinite wisdom. Ingrained in the bedrock of faith, gratitude is a potent catalyst for spiritual growth. When you express gratitude, you're not only acknowledging God's generous acts but also attuning yourself to His divine frequency. This alignment fosters spiritual sensitivity, enabling you to perceive God's guidance with enhanced clarity. Consider the Apostle Paul's exhortation in 1 Thessalonians 5 verse 18, In everything give thanks, for this is the will of God in Christ Jesus for you. Paul's words imply a continuous, unwavering practice of gratitude, irrespective of circumstances. He isn't suggesting a causal relationship between gratitude and God's will but rather advocating for gratitude as an integral aspect of your spiritual identity. By embracing gratitude, you're not trying to curry favor with God or manipulate outcomes. Instead, you're cultivating an open, receptive heart, prepared to receive God's wisdom. Gratitude is your spiritual barometer, adjusting your spiritual alignment and intensifying your connection with God. Exercising gratitude is an innovative approach that can revolutionize your prayer life. It's not about getting more from God, but about deepening your relationship with Him. So, the next time you pray, remember to express your gratitude first and watch your spiritual connection grow. Chapter 13 Intercessory Prayer Explained Just as gratitude can deepen your connection with God, so can another powerful spiritual practice, intercessory prayer. This type of prayer functions as a bridge, a conduit between God and those you're praying for. It's an act of love, an exercise in empathy that extends beyond your personal needs to encompass the concerns of others. Intercessory prayer, as the term suggests, is the act of intervening, or stepping in, on behalf of someone else. You're not merely praying for your own needs, but standing in the gap, spiritually speaking, for another person. This can mean praying for their health, their finances, their relationships, or their spiritual journey. It's an act of selfless love, reflecting Christ's own mediation for us, Romans 8 verse 34. For intercessory prayer to be effective, you must approach it with humility and sincerity. You're not trying to manipulate God or sway His will. Instead, you're aligning yourself with His heart for the person you're praying for. Remember, God's will is always for our good and His glory, Romans 8 verse 28. Finally, intercessory prayer requires persistence. Like the persistent widow in Luke 18 verses 1 to 8, you must keep knocking, keep asking, keep seeking. This doesn't indicate a reluctance on God's part, but rather, it molds our own hearts, deepening our compassion and growing our faith. Through intercessory prayer, you don't just talk to God about someone, you're fundamentally talking to someone about God. It's a powerful spiritual practice that can deepen your connection with God and with others. It's a sacred duty, a divine privilege, and a transformative experience. Chapter 14 Praying with a Community Amidst the private whispers and the silent pleas, there exists a potent spiritual force within communal prayer. It's not just about reciting words in unison, but about the synergy of faith and collective spiritual energy. The Bible, specifically in Matthew 18 verse 20, asserts, For where two or three gather in my name, there am I with them. This verse underscores the importance of collective prayer, suggesting an amplified spiritual presence when believers come together. The communal prayer isn't a mere ritual, but an innovative means to foster spiritual connection, growth, and resilience. When you voice your prayers within a community, 
you're not only sharing your spiritual burdens but also reinforcing your faith with others. This intermingling of faiths can lead to a stronger spiritual bond that surpasses the limitations of individual prayer. Moreover, communal prayer engages you in an act of spiritual empathy, where you learn to lend your faith to others in times of need. This experience can cultivate a deeper understanding of God's Word and its application in life. However, praying within a community shouldn't replace your personal connection with God. It's an augmentation, a means to enrich your spiritual life and experience God's presence in a multifaceted way. The key lies in integrating both individual and communal prayers to enhance your spiritual journey. Chapter 15 Journaling Your Prayers While communal prayer offers a unique spiritual unity, there's another method that can add depth to your relationship with God, journaling your prayers. This innovative approach to communication with the divine invites a theological shift, pushing the traditional boundaries of prayer. The act of writing your prayers, rather than speaking them, stimulates a different cognitive process. It encourages analysis, contemplation, and a more profound connection with your thoughts. You're not just reciting well-known phrases, you're actively engaging in a dialogue with God, pouring out your innermost desires, fears, and hopes onto paper. Refer to Psalm 102 verse 2, Do not hide your face from me in the day of my distress, incline your ear to me, in the day when I call answer me quickly, which underscores the urgency and intimacy of prayer. Journaling can intensify this connection, fostering a deeper, more personal communication with God. The art of journaling can also serve as a chronicle of your faith journey. It's a tangible record of your spiritual growth, providing a means of reflection and evaluation of your faith's progression. It's a chronicle of answered prayers, a reminder of God's faithfulness and your development as a believer. Chapter 16 Recognizing God's Answers In your prayerful conversations with God, Discerning his responses is an essential component of deepening your spiritual relationship. You may find yourself asking, Did God answer my prayer? Did I just miss it? It's a common challenge, but by understanding the nature of God's communication, you can gain fresh insights into his divine dialogues. God's answers aren't always direct or immediate. His communications are often subtle, requiring a discerning heart attuned to his divine frequency. God's responses may come through circumstances, the Bible, or impressions on your heart. There's no one-size-fits-all formula, and this is where the innovative concept of spiritual mindfulness comes into play. It involves being aware, receptive, and sensitive to God's unique ways of speaking to you. The Bible provides profound guidance on this matter. In 1 Kings 19 verses 11 to 13, God's voice isn't in the wind, earthquake, or fire, but a gentle whisper. It reminds you that God's answers may not come in spectacular or grand ways, but in the quiet, gentle nudgings on your spirit. Recognizing God's answers isn't about seeking specific outcomes. It's about understanding His will and aligning your desires with His divine plan. The Apostle Paul in Philippians 4 verses 6-7 urges believers to pray about everything with thanksgiving promising that God's peace, surpassing all understanding, will guard your hearts and minds. Chapter 17 Overcoming Doubts in Prayer Doubts can creep into your prayer life, subtly eroding your faith and making you question God's presence or His willingness to answer your prayers. This wavering can undermine your spiritual energy and obscure the transformative power of prayer. In this struggle, you're not alone. Even biblical figures like David and Job experienced similar trials. Acknowledge these doubts, as denial won't facilitate growth. To overcome doubts in prayer, you need to grasp the essence of prayer itself. Prayer isn't just about getting what you want, but growing in relationship with God, aligning your will with His. You're not petitioning a distant deity, but communicating with a loving Father. Ground your understanding in scriptures like Matthew 7 verse 11, which assures God's readiness to give good gifts to His children. Revamp your prayer approach. Instead of viewing unanswered prayers as divine disinterest, see them as opportunities for spiritual growth. 
God isn't a vending machine dispensing blessings at our whim. He's a wise and loving parent who knows what's best for us, even when it's hard to accept. Doubts will still arise, it's a part of our fallen human nature. But integrating these insights into your prayer life can fortify your faith. Lean into the promises of God's Word, like Hebrews 11 verse 6, which states that God rewards those who earnestly seek Him. By holding on to this truth, you can overcome doubts in prayer, nurturing a resilient faith that transcends the uncertainties of life. Chapter 18 The Role of the Holy Spirit Understanding the role of the Holy Spirit is paramount in solidifying your faith and deepening your relationship with God. The Holy Spirit, as a divine person of the Trinity, isn't merely an impersonal force, but rather the active presence of God in the world, and more intimately, in the life of a believer. The Holy Spirit is your counselor, comforter, and guide. The Spirit is the one who convicts you of sin, leads you into truth, and empowers you to live a life worthy of your calling. The Holy Spirit illuminates the words of Scripture, making them come alive with personal significance and revealing the character of God. According to the Apostle Paul in 1 Corinthians 2 verses 10 to 12, this is how we can understand things freely given to us by God. This implies a constant, dynamic interaction between a believer and the Holy Spirit. To experience the fullness of what God has in store for you, nurturing a deep, personal relationship with the Holy Spirit is crucial. This is more than just acknowledging its existence, it's about allowing the Spirit to shape your character, influence your decisions, and guide your actions. The Holy Spirit, in consequence, plays an indispensable role in your faith journey. By recognizing and yielding to this divine presence, you're not just enhancing your spiritual growth, but you're also setting the stage for a more vibrant, fulfilling relationship with God. Chapter 19 Embracing Spiritual Warfare As you plunge deeper into your faith journey, you'll inevitably encounter spiritual warfare. This battle isn't against flesh and blood, but against principalities, against powers, in the spiritual domain, Ephesians 6 verse 12. It's a concept that's both intimidating and often misunderstood, yet it's a reality you can't afford to overlook. Understanding spiritual warfare requires a shift in perspective. You're not just a passive observer in your faith journey, you're an active participant. You've been called to put on the full armor of God, Ephesians 6 verse 11. This isn't merely an analogy, but an exhortation to equip yourself with the spiritual tools needed to withstand the enemy's attacks. The armor includes truth, righteousness, peace, faith, salvation, and the Word of God. These aren't physical elements, but spiritual virtues to be embraced and developed. It's not simply about reading the Bible or praying, it's about internalizing these virtues and making them part of your character. Embracing spiritual warfare means recognizing your role in the cosmic conflict. You're a soldier in God's army, and your actions, thoughts, and attitudes have eternal implications. It's a sobering responsibility but one that comes with divine empowerment. You're not fighting alone, God is with you, providing strength and guidance. Chapter 20 Timing and Patience in Prayer Traversing spiritual warfare equips you with the necessary tools to withstand the enemy's attacks, but it also prepares you for the next phase of your faith journey, mastering the art of timing and patience in prayer. You see, the practice of prayer isn't just about uttering words or presenting requests before God, it's an exercise in patience, persistence, and divine timing. Consider the biblical patriarch, Abraham. He was promised a son, but the manifestation of that promise didn't occur instantly. It required patience, trust, and an understanding of God's timing. This example serves to illustrate the integral role of timing and patience in prayer. Analyzing the epistemology of prayer, we stumble upon the Greek term, kairos, denoting the right, critical, or opportune moment. It's not merely chronological, but qualitative, aligning with God's perfect timing. By integrating this concept, you're not only praying but also waiting on God's kairos. So, how can you master this artistry? 
begin by recognizing that prayer is a dialogue, not a monologue. It's about listening as much as it's about speaking, requiring your patience. Then, learn to trust in God's timing. He's not a genie granting immediate wishes, but a loving Father who knows when it's best to answer. Chapter 21 Fasting and Prayer Connection In the journey of faith, you'll encounter the profound practice of fasting, a spiritual discipline intricately connected to prayer. This isn't merely abstaining from food as a physical exercise, but a conscious act of self-denial for spiritual enrichment. It's a sacrificial offering, a relinquishing of physical sustenance, aimed at deepening your connection with God. Scripture elucidates this connection in Matthew 6 verses 16 to 18, where Jesus instructs his disciples on the right manner of fasting. He emphasizes a personal, secret fasting, done not for the admiration of others, but for the eyes of God alone. It's not about the outward appearance, but the inward transformation that fasting facilitates. Fasting and prayer, when interwoven, form a potent spiritual force. Fasting intensifies prayer, creating a heightened sense of spiritual awareness. It's like turning the dial of your spiritual sensitivity up a notch. You're more attuned to the voice of God, more receptive to divine instructions. When you fast, you're fundamentally creating space and time for God to move in your life, to intervene in your circumstances. It's a tangible expression of humility, a recognition of your dependence on God, and an act of submission to His will. Chapter 22 Prayer and Meditation Techniques Delving into prayer and meditation techniques, let's consider the significance that lies within these spiritual practices. These methods aren't just religious obligations or ancient rituals, they're spiritual tools, intended to enrich your relationship with God, and enhance your spiritual growth. Prayer, as you know, is a direct line to God. It's your personal dialogue with the divine, an expression of your faith, hopes, and dreams. It's more than just asking for things, it's about opening your heart, seeking guidance, and expressing gratitude. It's your spiritual lifeline, connecting you to the source of all creation. Meanwhile, meditation is the art of listening. It's about quietening your mind and tuning into God's frequency, it's about feeling God's presence, hearing His whispers, and understanding His messages. It's about finding peace in the chaos of life and connecting with the divine on a deeper level. The Bible, in Psalm 46 verse 10, invites us to be still and know that I'm God. This is a clear reference to the meditative practice, a call for stillness, silence, and spiritual attentiveness. Innovation lies in how you integrate these techniques into your daily life. You don't have to be in a specific place or assume a particular posture to pray or meditate. You can pray while driving to work, meditate while doing chores. The key is authenticity and intentionality. Chapter 23 Understanding God's Will Understanding God's will can often feel like decoding a complex, divine puzzle but it doesn't have to be. With the right mindset and tools, you can decipher the mysteries of God's will. Firstly, acknowledge that God's will isn't some abstract concept floating in the ether. It's an intricate blend of divine intelligence and infinite love. In Jeremiah 29 verse 11, God reassures us, For I know the plans I have for you, plans to prosper you and not to harm you, plans to give you hope and a future. This scripture emphasizes that God's will isn't arbitrary, but intentionally designed for your good. Understanding God's will requires active engagement with His Word. Explore the Bible's messages, apply them to your life, and use them as a blueprint for your decisions. Proverbs 3 verses 5 to 6 advises, Trust in the Lord with all your heart and lean not on your own understanding, in all your ways submit to Him, and He'll make your paths straight. The more you align your actions with God's teachings, the clearer His will becomes. Remember, God's will isn't about dictating your every move. It allows for freedom and personal growth. Ephesians 5 verse 17 cautions, Therefore don't be foolish, but understand what the Lord's will is. 
Consequently, deciphering God's will isn't about seeking rigid instructions but understanding His broader intentions for your life. Chapter 24 Building a Prayer Support System As you endeavor to decipher God's will, nurturing a prayer support system can be a powerful tool in your spiritual journey. This network of fellow believers can provide you with the encouragement, wisdom, and spiritual guidance you need to weather the storms of life. However, building this system isn't a task to be taken lightly. It requires discernment, commitment, and a heart open to God's guidance. Your prayer support system should consist of individuals who share your faith, uphold your values, and possess a deep understanding of the power of prayer. Seek out those who are mature in their faith, seasoned in their prayer life, and can uphold you in times of spiritual warfare. You're not looking for mere companionship, but for spiritual warriors, intercessors who can stand in the gap for you. With your system in place, you're not alone in your spiritual battles. You have a team of fellow believers standing with you, praying for you, and uplifting you in prayer. They'll pray with you when you're weak, stand with you when you're strong, and intercede for you when you're unable to pray. Chapter 25 Celebrating Answered Prayers Jubilation often envelopes us when our prayers are answered, serving as a declaration to God's faithfulness in our lives. It's a profound evidence to His unwavering love and evidence of His intimate involvement in our existence. Yet, how often do we pause to acknowledge and celebrate these divine interventions? Biblically, celebrating answered prayers isn't a novel concept. In fact, it's a deeply ingrained practice. Recall David in the book of Psalms, where he regularly acknowledged God's interventions with songs of thanksgiving. In Psalms 116 verse 17, he proclaims, I will offer to you the sacrifice of thanksgiving and call on the name of the Lord. Celebrating answered prayers is a deliberate act of recognizing God's hand at work, and it's a powerful reinforcement of faith. It encourages spiritual growth by deepening your understanding of God's character and His ways. The act of celebration not only honors God but also reiterates to your own spirit that God is indeed present, active, and responsive. To innovate in your spiritual journey, consider journaling your prayers and the answers you receive. This practice will serve as a tangible reminder of God's goodness and faithfulness. It's also a tool for reflection and encouragement during challenging times. After all, if he answered before, he'll do it again. Just as a gardener nurtures his seeds with patience and care, so too must you cultivate your prayer life. Embrace the Bible's teachings, establish a meaningful routine, and lean on a supportive spiritual community. By aligning your will with God's and moving with unwavering faith, you'll find your prayers are not just heard, but answered. Remember, God's divine presence isn't a fleeting whisper, but a constant dialogue ready to enrich and transform your life. Thanks for listening.